be able to introduce tonight um, a representative of the Communist Party of Iraq, Amir Saleh, who's, I think I've known him for 24 years, something like that, since 1984. Uh, and he's representing a party that has a quite heroic record in terms of fighting against dictatorship, fighting against imperialism uh, in Iraq, going back 50, 60 years, I think the party was formed, 74 years is correct, yeah, 74 years. Uh, a party that's lost many of its members uh, in bloody repressions by the British, by British appointees, and subsequently by uh, dictatorships of one form or another. But it's a party that still exists, is still strong, it's still got thousands of members in Iraq take part, as have in fact virtually all other political parties in uh, Iraq, in the political process in Iraq in attempting to fight for the sovereignty of the people of Iraq, to fight against the privatization of its resources, and to fight for uh, the peace and security uh, on the basis of the Iraqi people uh, for a speedy uh, withdrawal of American and British forces. Back in 19, uh, 2003, when the Americans prepared to invade Iraq, the Communist Party of Iraq message was loud and clear. Not to war, not to, dictate, to dictatorship. This message came from knowing that war only brings destruction, brings no joy or peace to the people. And uh, throughout uh, the preparation for war, the party has campaigned vigorously on all stages, in meetings and uh, demonstrations and uh, uh, convoys to everywhere to stop the war. But the Americans planned to go ahead and do it. So they invaded Iraq with the, of course, the international opposition. Although saying that there are few people at the time who welcomed the war in a way of getting rid of Saddam. Saddam ruled Iraq ruthlessly for 35 years. And whatever crimes uh, came on TV and exposed after the overthrow of the regime, still hundreds of thousands of people missing, and still a lot of the crimes have not been discovered yet. Anyway, so when the war came, the party had declared no, not to war, and the people, a lot of the people, especially in, in, you know, like outside, have supported the party in its stand. But when the, it's impossible to fight against the American invasion. Uh, at the time, there were a lot of promises brought by the invasion of democracy, of peace, and to rebuild Iraq. That led to the party to take uh, a stand, is to participate in the political process, try to rebuild the country destroyed by the Saddam regime and by the sanctions as well. Try and bring the political forces together and re-educate them, rebuild Iraq or from the destruction it suffers. Unfortunately, in, in doing that, there have been massive mistakes done by the American administrations. The forces that managed to rule Iraq after that did not put the country first. They put their own narrow political and so I'll say sectarian uh, goals ahead of the country. So that has led later on to what, what we see just now. Soon after the invasion, the party, and that was documented in the conference, asked for all political parties to take part in the struggle against Saddam to unite in a national conference to elect the people so they can rule Iraq after the invasion. But the Americans, with their sort of arrogant type of uh, strategy, they overruled this and they declared, they formed a council to rule Iraq. And since that, day, since that day, the country has been ruined more and more. And that is, uh, for me, one of the biggest mistakes they have done, because the people were ready to rule. There were uh, you know, a lot of intellectual and um, uh, technocrats who were placed in order to replace Saddam's regime. But the Americans overruled this and the country went into destruction more. During the 
four years, the biggest threat we have seen, as well as the American invasion, is a sectarian strife that has nearly destroyed Iraq. During Saddam's time, there were the sectarian feelings was hidden inside because the regime, with his ruthless policies, tried to suppress any opposition to him. But deep inside, there was a lot of sectarian problems that's taken place. When the regime overthrown, all that came to the surface. Remember, Iraq 35 years of the most severe, ruthless dictatorship ever known to humanity, and this is. Part of it was the sectarian uh, strife, the sectarian problem that was created. When the regime overthrew, all the problems was boiling underneath, it all came out to the surface. The sanctions, like for, during the sanction, the average wage of a, a, a lecturer, a university lecturer, was something like $7 a month. So the country down on its knees, partly because of the American policies and mostly because of the the regime's policies. So when the regime overthrew, you see the whole Iraq become, become boiling pot for all these problems are created by it. So like the, in the, uh, you know, the riots that took place and the robberies and you know, like just because there was no law at the time and the people wanted to express their anger with the previous regime. Save Iraq from its, the dire situation it is in. The party stand is very clear that we must end occupation, that you know, we must retain sovereignty, we must retain the control of our resources, we must stop an end to the sectarian killing, we must stop the interference of uh, the neighboring countries and, and the affairs of Iraq. The Iraqi people must be able to decide for themselves what type of regime they want without outside interference. We must be able to, to recognize Iraq as, as an entity, as one country, that has got a lot of sect, uh, different religions, different ethnic groups, different, it's, it's, it's an, a, a really unique, the number of ethnic minorities, the number of uh, religious groups in it. And we should be able to respect this and not interfere in its uh, destiny, otherwise, if Iraq falls, uh, which is, you know, like it's a bit promising now, if Iraq falls, the whole Middle East could be brought into more wars and more destruction. That's one of the reasons the party took part in the political process to make sure that the situation in the Middle East is already volatile, and if Iraq descends more into civil war, that will increase the pressure on all the area. There will be even more wars. There, for the party, the political process is the way to achieve at least peace within Iraq and at least try to stabilize the situation. Remember, after the fall of uh, the regime, we have uh, Al-Qaeda uh, came over, and we have remnants of the regime who are still very active. Saddam had over a million members of his party, something like 400,000 <coughs> immediate security apparatus that their job was to safeguard the regime. And we have criminal elements within Iraq that some like 10,000 of them were released a few days before the regime was overthrown. So these three elements are the main factor for Iraq's destruction. And they have united an unholy alliance to try to destabilize Iraq, try to bring Iraq back to the old days of dictatorship. And added to that, the foreign intervention from Iran to Turkey to Saudi Arabia. <coughs> Most of the countries around Iraq have a, trying to have a say in the future of Iraq because of mainly the oil, because Iraq is one of the richest nations on earth. It's got oil reserve, you know, it's the second highest oil, oil reserve in the world. So these factors and the presence of the American forces the other internal factors have did not help much to, de to stabilize Iraq. On the contrary, it helped to disrupt it even more and more.
the sectarian killing claimed something in the region of six to seven hundred thousand lives just over the last three years, as well as the suicide bombings, the uh, terrorist activity, which is a real threat in Iraq. I mean, people would say that the, these terrorists came, came with the Americans. We did not have Al-Qaeda before. That's true. But if you look at other places in the world, like Algeria, Morocco, there is no American forces there, but there is still terrorism is, is very active. And Iraq has taken the worst hits for these terrorists. Uh, lately, I'm glad to say there have been a lot of defeats for them. The people have started to rise, trying to stop them from even doing more damage to Iraq, which is the good thing about, you know, like things are moving slowly, slowly but surely towards more peaceful events. Thousands of comrades have been slaughtered under torture or died in Kurdistan fighting the previous regime. And it's got a history of the most intellectual and the most committed comrades in the Middle East. And it's a, a, a party that I'm very proud to be part of and a lot of other people. To, to take this stand, to participate in the political process was a very brave thing to do because if they don't do that, if they sit on the side and watch what's happening, the Islamists, the right wings, the remnant of the regime will try somehow to destroy Iraq even more. They'll try their best to stop the will of progress from taking place in Iraq. From that point of view, and to start stop even the, with the American plans in Iraq, they've decided to take part and be part even of the government. It's, it's sometimes not easy to understand how come a communist party is so uh, brave in its stand and so, you know, it's got fantastic history. How come they take part in a government sort of overlooked by the Americans and the Americans come, come to invade Iraq and they still manage to be part of the political process? The answer, the answer, I think, for me is simple. Iraq is a very complex place to be. It's not a stereotype. You cannot apply the rules <coughs> to each country, you know, especially in Iraq. We have 35 years of dictatorship. We have invasion and what, what follows it. We have sectarian killings that exceeded any expectations. We have resources might be, you know, like even sub, you know, we're speaking now, the Americans are trying to pass oil law, which is very unpopular. And we have people uh, in Kurdistan possibly asking for independence from Iraq. And that might disintegrate the country. If, if the Communist Party don't try and unite all the forces of Iraq and trying to stop all this from happening, no other party in Iraq can do that. The Iraqi Communist Party is the only party which has centers all over Iraq, offices, which has Kurds, Shia, Sunni, all ethnic minorities, all sects as well. There's no other party in Iraq has this amount of uh, people uh, of its membership. That's one of the reasons. The second reason is understanding the concept of the Iraqi society, its history, its past, and you know, from this point of view, the party that insisted on trying to be part of the political process. And from inside the political process, try and stop the Americans from achieving their aims by stabilizing the country, by stopping the sectarian violence, by stopping to uh, defeat terrorism. From this will stop the Americans from achieving their goals. They say, okay, if Iraq becomes dem peaceful and democracy, they will do it too. That was the party's stand, is to stop all this from taking place so the Americans will not have any more excuse and they, they will pull out. Uh, the, unfortunately, the, sometimes this is the events didn't take place as, as we planned. You know, like you, you have terrorism, you have the neighbors, you have the sectarian killings. And you have parties and government which were outside Iraq, 
you know, for 25, 30 years. And when the invasion happened, they came along and they took, because of the religious background of the Iraqi society, they came and they took, they won the election. And their aim is not Iraq as much as their sect, as even to divide Iraq, you know, because one, the South will be like, you know, say, Catholic sort of very pro Iran, the West will be like Sunni, very uh, pro Saudi Arabia, and so on. Their aim was not Iraq, and, but they won the majority of the votes. So, how do you deal with these people? How do you? convey the message to them, Iraq it comes first. It's not like your religion or your sect or your ethnic background. This is all hard work, day-to-day -day work, in order for them to understand and get the message. And the party has succeeded in, you know, bringing a lot of peoples together. Try all the warring factions within even the government itself. And I speak to some of the comrades in Baghdad who will say it's impossible to imagine the, how hard it is trying to get people together and get them to sit down and tell them Iraq is at stake here. It's not your you know, sect or your ethnic background, the whole country. So think about that. And it has succeeded, I'm glad to say, in bringing a lot of these people together. See, the tension is less and less. And uh, that was evidence during the Congress. The party <coughs> managed to have a Congress in August. Uh, the, Congress, the last Congress was held in Baghdad in 1976 and ha held a few Congresses in Iraqi Kurdistan. One of the few parties in Iraq that managed with the dictatorships to have a Congress in Iraqi Kurdistan. I'm glad to have a, a, a my comrade Abdul, who was a partisan in Iraqi Kurdistan, and he was fighting the previous regime. He took part in, in the last Congress, and uh, you know, with the all difficulties included, the last Congress, in fact, that sort of identified what the problem is, and put a proper and very logical solutions to the problem. You know, like how to try and regain sovereignty in Iraq, how to stabilize the, the situation, how can we stop the terrorism from destroying even more of Iraq, how can we give the people very basic services. You know, like in, in Iraq, the temperature reaches about 45 to 50 degrees, and they get one hour electricity a day. There is no water for days, and sometimes if you're lucky, you know, electricity two, three hours, and with that heat and with these difficult circumstances, the party insists on <coughs> doing its best and bring the people together, improve the services. They work tirelessly in order to educate the people, educate them in, you know, the schools, they have managed to participate in uh, schools to, you know, like even teach people not just the basic reading and writing, you know, like uh, sort of intellectual <coughs> meetings and uh, uh, poetry, which is we lack during the dictatorship time. They have um, like mobile surgical units uh, to the poor areas and uh, give them free, free medical uh, services. Even football, they managed to get you know some 70, 80 teams together in, uh, in a tournament. So these sort of activities that are dealing directly with the people, not from above. Let them feel there is, uh, you know, that, that the party that worked hard for them is doing its best uh, to support them in these hard times. The circumstances have led Iraq into this description. I can sort of speak for a long time about, you know, the crimes have been are committed just now by the extremists and by, unfortunately, the presence of the American forces as well. But the rest assured the you know, Communist Party of Iraq is very faithful and very loyal to its roots and very loyal to the ideals that having a, a Communist Party in the Middle East with these circumstances 
makes them, you know, really very proud of uh, what, what, what they are doing in Iraq. And we have a lot of com comrades in outside Iraq as well. They are conveying their messages that we are still loyal to the ideals of the party, and we welcome any help and or support that we can get. Um, thank you very much for the help. <laughs> said the Communist Party of Iraq uh, is campaigning for a secular state, a federal state, uh, and a state that preserves the sovereignty of its people, not just in political terms, but economically, in terms of the resources of that country, so that they are not taken over by external firms. Up to the present, those resources still remain the property of the Iraqi state public sector is still large, the oil has not been privatized, uh, and this of course is the big issue with the Americans. They want it privatized as part of their withdrawal process. They went in to get the oil, they don't want to leave without the oil. And of course, once it's privatized, they will still be there, they will still control the country On economically. The uh, yes. So that's the... Um, those are the issues, and uh, the Iraqi party has sought to bring together a coalition of uh, forces, not all of whom share the same goals in total as the Iraqi party, but share at least some of them, to be able to give a center of gravity to the resistance to the Americans within the government and within parliament, which is itself, as you said, a very diverse uh, and divided Parliament and government, because it represents the whole dimension of parties from the, uh, the Shia uh, religious parties, the Sunni religious parties, uh, and the parties that represent uh, a more secular tradition as well, and Kurdistan parties, some of whom are now calling for independence. That's right. Yeah. So um, that has been the job that they've attempted. So, Let's have some questions because it has been quite a, as, 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 as I mean, say, quite a controversial position uh, to uh, take part within the uh, political process. Some say that the party should have stood aside. Some say it should have joined the armed resistance, um, such as it is, the resistance to the Americans. Um, but uh, that has been something that the Iraqi party has said would not have been a sensible thing to have done and would have simply exacerbated the uh, sectarian conflicts. So let's get some discussion and debate. Who wants to come in first with questions? You know, like, put the presence of the American troops, there's 150,000 of them, and they, at the time, they couldn't control Iraq because of the violence that erupted there. Lately, the sectarian killing has reduced because they managed to divide sort of the Shia areas from the Sunni areas. That has stopped it a little bit, reduced it. And we believe, you know, like they came in and they destroyed the army, they destroyed the police when they invaded Iraq. And then if they leave without at least some safeguards, you know, like at least if we have the police force and the army sort of it can stand on its feet, we will definitely welcome them even as soon as possible. But until <coughs> we are confident, the army is confident they can manage it, that uh, so, you know, it will, will, will cause more chaos. Because not just like uh, Turkey has threatened to invade Kurdistan because of the oil in Kirkuk. And, you know, I feel like it, if the Americans are there, possible they'll stop doing that. But that's one of the reasons people in Kurdistan welcome the Americans in a way to protect them from what possibly Turkey might do. So I just did mention, like, during the anniversary of the party in March, the first time in Baghdad, over 12,000 people attended the anniversary celebration. And that caused a shock wave in Iraq because, you know, like it's a curfew and it's, you know, like the terrorists 
bombings and the killing, suicide bombing, and the party still managed to hold this massive uh, celebration. And you know, like uh, even months later, people say that's the only sort of party we attended in, in three, four years where people could sing and dance. And you know, like, this is in a way showed how strong and how uh, supportive the the party in Iraq. And not just in Baghdad, in all over Iraq there was a big celebration for the anniversary. For the first part, the, since the chemical bombings in 1988, and I'll say again, our comrades who suffered from this chemical, chemical attacks, the party lost a lot of its partisans, and uh, a lot of them were forced out of Kurdistan. So they managed to retain some partisans, but not in the great quantities we had before. Most of them are used to protect the party uh, offices and protect the comrades. And so we don't have that big presence. Uh, as for the sectarian, there's no, and Kurdistan, again, going back to the invasion, the Kurdistan has benefited more from the invasion more than anybody else because of the rebel and because of the security situation is different and there is no sectarian tension in, in Kurdistan. And you know, again for them, for the Kurds, they say this is a liberation, it's not an invasion. And for so even people in the South, some of them say this is a liberation, not an invasion. Because they benefited uh, more than what they had before. The state is very weak and it's only exists in the green zone of, of, of Baghdad. You know, like it's four by five miles or something. Outside it, no, no minister, no, nothing can sort of step <coughs> out, even thinking of stepping outside because it's very weak. It's isolated itself from the people by their, you know, narrow-mindedness and by their sort of uh, not understanding their like, situation of hope. The, on the ground, the militia, the armed militia is, is very strong. Whether it's the Mahdi army or it's whether it's the sort of the Al Qaeda or you know, like it depends what about in Baghdad and sort of the ordinary people sort of stuck in between in between all these militias one side and then you get the weak government one side and you get the sort of the American army uh, is doing what it's wanted and nobody can stop it. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, dangerous, it's complex, but, you know, we are optimistic. We are, I'm sure we can oversee these problems. And uh, most of the people I speak to, even in Iraq, they say we will. Uh, definitely our time will come. We'll have peace and that grassroots will. I think uh, a good thing about lately is the people who elected these religious parties and, and, and to power have now if they have an election, well, none of them will be elected because they are corrupt and they did not give anything to the country. So the people on the ground, the grassroots are definitely awakening. They are seeing the, the mistake they have done, uh, the emotional sort of uh, during the election and you know, they use their religion to bribe people into electing them. And that is our, another problem. We, it's not just facing Iraq, but the whole Middle East. The Islamists are uh, getting stronger and stronger. Whether it's the Shia sort of pro Iran or the Sunni pro Qaeda and Saudi. And this is a real danger to uh, all intellectual, all you know, uh, secular people in the Middle East. Because they are pushing for uh, an extreme Islamist agenda even parts of Iraq. And funny, Iraq never ever religion had anything to do with the political system. Religion always kept out of politics until the invasion, until the fall of Saddam. And said, you know, these Islamist political parties have uh, come out to the surface and they want to rule Iraq. I mean, Iraq being a secular state since its foundation and being of the cradle of civilization, as we say, and you know, and it's strange to our, 
it's, it's really strange, you know, you see my brother who was a very left wing and, and then suddenly he's becoming a Muslim and, you know, so, excuse me, like, I don't know about you, and like, it's uh, just a uh, very strange feeling, you know, you see the head scarf all over Iraq. Uh, and I see on TV some a woman without no one, they have, have this one, you know, like, you point to her, like, what, what, what came over you? In this country that's, you know, going back years and years, you know, even the 40s and the 50s never seen an extreme religious parties like we see in now. But that's another struggle for the party must keep up with. You know, like it's a communist party in the middle of all these Islamists and try their best and uh, make them to understand and, you know, res respect the ideal of the communism. Um, I mean, tell them that party is there to stay. And because, you know, Saddam tried his best to <coughs> destroy the party. And that was, you know, like, uh, even before he fall, I'm very well known that he said, oh, I, I couldn't do it. You know, like, uh, uh, the more you cut the grass root, the stronger it gets. And, you know, like, people say it's just like lawn, the more you cut it, the sort of, <laughs> the faster it grows. Uh, you know, going back, the struggle is, you know, with these religious parties now. Because it's very easy to be labeled as communist and as an atheist or whatever. And uh, it's sometimes even harder to struggle because you have to educate them what, what the party is about. Why do we should have a, a, a party that's, uh, that's a, as strong, as healthy, it's good for the country. First, uh, after the overthrow the regime, the main priority of the party is to re-establish its uh, cells and re-establish contact with the, uh, a lot of the people uh, you know, lost during the dictatorship. Uh, just I mean, I remind me of, uh, I, I don't know if you remember, during the fall of Saddam, there was a man who was having pictures of Saddam and he was slapping it with his shoes. Yeah. That became very <laughs> At that time, um, he was asked, why don't you go and take part in the looting? He said, the party didn't teach us to do that. At that time, didn't click what party, and then he became, he's a member of the Communist Party. And, you know, like that shows you how deep and how people sort of have respect for it. Before the whole party was weak, because it was death penalty, you know, we lost thousands of comrades. Uh, torture and execution during Saddam's regime. The first paper, you know, came out after the fall of Saddam. The second day after the fall of Saddam was Tariq al the party central organ. You know, like what's in the street was getting sold out. So the party had people working inside, but very limited. Because it was, you know, it's impossible to know that you are a member of the party. Because if they could attack Iran, either using Israel or, you know, like Americans would attack, that will have severe impact on Iraq as well. Because of the closeness, you know, because we are neighbors, so they might get the Iranians to even bomb Iraq and there will be another uh, more tension in the area. I mean, the party is totally against, it's in favor of bringing the people together, yes. But uh, it's not, it does not support the idea of, you know, like you talk to the ex and trying to get them to fight, because that will create even more division. And we say this is, it should be left to us to, to decide. Uh, you know, like it's, it's very obvious the Americans want a way out, because they, it's a, you know, like they, and a, a total and utter mess. There is no, you know, they're doing everything possible and trying to stabilize the situation so they can move on. Because if they have, I mean, that's a problem. Iraq, America's got a problem with Iran. Iraq is paying for it. The whole sort of Islamic terrorists have a problem with America. They come and settle it in Iraq. And everybody's got a problem somewhere else. Sort of Iraq is, is the place to settle it. And the people are, you know, 
the suffering of global, all the sort of even in the international tensions, it's all on, on our head. And that is, will increase the tension even more because Iran, I mean, our students today, they have sort of sleeping cells in case of America or Israel attacks them. They have cells in Saudi and in you know, so many places in the Middle East. That will not help our cause and not help to have peace in the Middle East.